What is good, y'all? It's your boy, Shows, and if you're new to the channel, welcome to Shows World TV. So today, I'm going to be reviewing Deadpool 2. So a disclaimer, if you never saw the movie, please click out of the video right now because this is a spoiler review and I don't want you saying I didn't tell you you were warned. All right. So first things first, there's a lot of cameos in this film, which to my surprise was in there and I wasn't expecting any of that. This was during my birthday weekend. I didn't really do much. I didn't get a lot of calls, but for those who called and text messaged me on my birthday, which was May 24th, thank you very much for that. But you know, again, if you haven't seen the movie, please just skip this video entirely. So the first thing that's first is we learned that Wade Wilson, AKA the poor E, was on a mercenary contract killing spree for about two years going after the events of the first movie. And eventually he heads home to Vanessa because they had their anniversary. They were planning to start a family. But before this, in the first scene we see Wade Wilson on gasoline drums trying to attempt suicide, but you will learn in a bit why that was. So as Vanessa and Wade are home talking about starting a family, one of his targets who he failed to kill on one of his missions had found Wade and Vanessa at home and he ended up killing Vanessa, which leads into the opening credit scenes, which of course has the funny Texas that replaced the actual people who made the film and you know, were responsible for the film, much like the first Deadpool. So that was pretty hilarious. And so now we fast forward to when Wade tries to kill himself with the gasoline drums that didn't work. His body parts were, you know, splattered all over the place. He had discovered Vanessa in the afterlife and his own version of the afterlife, which happens various times throughout the film when he's near death experiences. So Colossus ends up taking Deadpool back to the mansion to heal and his body finally regenerated and heals. So we get cameos from the X-Men, the actual X-Men from the, you know, those films that are prequels to the films that were done in the early 2000s. You know, you get the younger version of the X-Men in the, so, you know, Wade decides he wants to join the X-Men as some form of healing, you know, to get over Vanessa. But then they find out on the news that a young mutant by the name of Russell Collins, who was very important throughout the film, he's in a standoff with authorities, you know, police officers and things. And so Wade and Negasonic Teenager and her new girlfriend, who goes by the name Yukio, she helps along. Um, I don't believe she's involved this time around. Actually, in the beginning of the film, my bad on that, but... Negasonic and Deadpool, they go to help along with Colossus to try and talk this kid down, to, you know, to, to not, um, you know, kill anybody. So as Wade gets to talking to Russell, he finds out that the staff at this orphanage that, that Russell was staying in, aka Firefist, which is the name of the young mutant, he finds out that the staff at the orphanage that he was staying in, that Russell was being abused by a lot of the staff members, including the headmaster there. So then Wade ends up killing one of the staff members there. And would you believe Colossus tried to stop more killing from Wade? So Wade and Russell end up getting arrested and brought into this maximum security prison that's called the Icebox. And it's held basically for crazy mutants and other mutants alike who have done things in the public eye and they're trying to keep it under wraps. You know, so now we cut to a scene where we see the other mutant involved in this film heavily, which is Cable, played by Josh Brolin. Now, if you know Josh Brolin, he plays Thanos in the Avengers film for the MCU for Disney. We're going to get into why that's important in a bit, but just to basically put this all together cohesively, we see Cable, he's holding a charred bear. It looks like it's been charred in fire. And his house has been set on fire. And you see two of their bodies, which daughter and wife, who were killed. And it's revealed throughout the film eventually who killed um, 
you know, Cable's wife and daughter. So he goes back into the future to kill the person responsible for this, and we actually find out it was Russell in the future, you know, as far as who killed Cable's wife and daughter. So this is why Cable went back into the future to the icebox prison to try and kill, you know, Russell. So eventually Cable breaks into the icebox prison. You see all the prisoners get let out of their cage for a bit. There's a huge prison fight going on. And as this is going on, you see Wade fighting Cable. And Cable somehow subdues um, you know, Russell a couple of times. So they get into this huge fight. And eventually, you know, Cable decides to take away um, an anniversary gift that Wade had gave Vanessa early in the film when they were trying to celebrate the anniversary, which was a speedball token. And Cable had taken this away from Wade. Wade was mad about that, so he forces Cable out the prison. They end up crashing into these rocks in the mountain area where the maximum prison was. And Wade hits his head pretty bad. He ends up in the aftermath, <laughs> the afterlife again with Vanessa. I'm scrambling my words, so I'm sorry about that. So. He ends up seeing Vanessa again, and Vanessa somehow convinces him to care for Russell because it was admitted, you know, in the prison while Wade and Cable are talking that Wade admits to not really caring for, for Russell. And that, of course, made Russell upset. But once, um, you know, I guess, as I said, once Cable had taken away the ski ball token from Wade, Cable, you know, and they got forced out of the prison, they hit their heads on the rocks and Wade has said pretty bad. He sees Vanessa in the afterlife vision and Vanessa convinces him that maybe he should care for you know Russell to, you know, help him, you know, better his life, among other things. So once Wade comes back, you know, from hitting his head pretty bad, he ends up going to Weasel, who you know is the head of a Deadpool bar. And end up forming an X-Force team. They go on LinkedIn to find members. So they end up finding a few members and I remember writing that information down so I could remember it because there were certain things I knew I was gonna forget anyway. But the X-Force crew basically comprises of Domino, Bedlam who's played by um, Terry Crews, Zeitgeist who's played by Bill Skarsgård who was in the IT movie from last year for 2017. We're gonna reveal the other cameos as well. And then there's a guy named Peter in there who just found the ad and was joined to the, you know, the X-Force anyway. There's Shatterstar, another person who was in there, and Vanisher. So, Wade forms this X-Force team, but it was also revealed before, you know, the fight with Cable, you know, between Wade and Cable that Russell had actually found a friend who was the biggest person in the prison, a monster sort of, as you can say, and I guessed who it was before the reveal, but this is what happened, so X-Force is formed, you know, so that they can get Russell out of the prison, because they're being moved by transport to another place, so X-Force goes along with Deadpool to try and you know, break Russell out of the prison, but unfortunately, <laughs> Hilariously, you know, through some dark humor, a lot of the X-Force members died except for Domino and Deadpool, who are in pursuit of the transport with the, you know, the whole vehicle transport going on. So they end up in this huge fight with um, some of the people who was on the transport, and Cable intercepts, you know, and he ends up going on the transport by some miracle right through some i guess you could say little pen tricks or whatever russell ends up breaking out of his cell and then he breaks you know his friend who's in the jail cell with him in the transport he breaks him out of there and it's revealed that it's actually juggernaut now if you remember juggernaut he was in the original x-men films from the early 2000s which is crazy to me uh, x-men's he's part of that x-men whole storyline because Juggernaut is one of those huge mutants and definitely a powerful mutant at that so 
juggernaut ends up destroying the uh, prison transport through you know, sheer force, of course. And <clears throat> eventually it's revealed that juggernaut knows of Deadpool, so he doesn't like Wade, so he ends up ripping him apart. You know, and, <laughs> and of course, Cable had decided, you know, to hide out. He, of course, he fell to capture Russell again, so he went away. So then, as you know, Wade, he regenerates again because of his regenerative healing power. You know, they stay, he stays at the house with the blind lady from the first film. And when he's regenerating, there's this disturbing scene where he his private parts and everything is showing. It looks like the lower half of the body, you know, shows like sort of like a baby form, kind of speak. So, you know, Cable finds his way to the house and he decides to join forces with Domino and Deadpool to try and prevent Russell from killing the headmaster as his first kill, which would eventually lead to other kills in the future, which of course would lead to Russell killing Cable's family in the near future. So they were trying to prevent that. So they end up going to the orphanage and you see Russell is having a standoff and he kills off almost half of the staff already. But before even that, Mega Sonic Teenager and Yukio had decided to help along with their pawn domino, you know, and cables so that they could you know, go and try to save Russell. But there's this huge fight between um, there's this huge fight between Juggernaut and Colossus and. <laughs> Juggernaut is serving Colossus very crazy like so you know eventually Negasonic and Yukio have to step in and they end up subduing Juggernaut in the craziest dark humorous way possible which ends up killing Juggernaut through severe electrocution right so as so as Wade and Cable try to you know they try to negotiate and try to convince Russell not to kill the headmaster Cable finds that Wade is not really successful at this, so he shoots his gun at Russell. But then Deadpool had put on a power dampering color, like what they had while they were in the icebox. He managed to keep it somehow. I don't know how. But he puts on, Deadpool puts on the, the power dampering color, right? So that he can somehow convince Russell of not killing the headmaster and he jumps in front of Cable's bullet which ends up killing him because you know now he doesn't have his regenerative power his cancer's kicking in he goes into this whole montage where he's talking to Domino and, and Cable and he's talking to Colossus and Megasonic and Yukio through this hilarious speech before he dies the thing is, right, even before all that, Cable had one more um, charge for his time traveling device to take him back home once he had, you know, completed his mission of killing Russell, which he didn't. The thing was, the timeline had been fixed. You see the bear go back to its normal form, and of course, Cable now has his family again because. You know, Russell had changed his ways and he didn't kill the headmaster. But, you know, Cable, instead of using the one last charge he had to go home, he reversed time. He put Vanessa's, uh, he had put Vanessa's um, ski ball token in front of Wade's heart so that when Cable had shot his gun again, instead the bullet hits the ski ball token which Wade had gave to Vanessa in the beginning of the film, if you remember. So, Deadpool ends up surviving this time. <laughs> so he changed the whole timeline from that. And, of course, they still had the power dampering color on Deadpool, so they had to figure out the code for it. And luckily, 
Domino whose power is, you know, the power of luck, he, they were able to figure that out, so he got the collar off. So now, during, during the post credit scenes at the end of the film, once this is all resolved, we find out that, of course, Russell had still, you know, changed his ways even after the timeline was fixed, in that sense. So then Negasonic and Yu-Gi-Oh, they decide to fix the time traveling device that <clears throat> Cable had had, and they give it to Deadpool so that he can go back in time fixing a few things. He ends up saving Vanessa, you know, he ends up killing, uh, ends up killing Ryan Reynolds as himself, you know, Ryan Reynolds, who was trying to make the Green Lantern film, because we know it all sucked, so he ends up killing Ryan Reynolds for that. He ends up killing the X-Men Origins Wolverine Deadpool, which revealed Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, you know, as a cameo. And I have forgot to mention that during the X-Force deaths from the first moments when that most of the X-Force had died, including Peter, right? I have forgot to mention one of the X-Force members who were Vanisher, if you remember me, if you remember me mentioning Vanisher, actually turned out to be Brad Pitt, so that was pretty funny to figure out. So, like I, like I was saying, Deadpool goes back in time. What he first does is he saves Vanessa, then he goes back in time and he saves X-Force member Peter, then he goes back in time and he goes to Ryan Reynolds, who is actually Ryan Reynolds that plays Deadpool, you know, in the film. He goes to Ryan Reynolds, who's making the Green Lantern script, and he shoots him so that the film never comes out, and that's how the film ends. I actually stayed till the very end of the credits because I thought maybe there would be an end credit scene like in the MCU, but of course that never happened, which was a waste of time, but it was still a good movie. I give the rating of the movie at least a 9 out of 10 as a result of that, you know, being that it was all well-rounded, it was fast-paced, it never slowed, and and the best part is that no one spoiled it before I went into the theater. I almost spoiled it for myself when I was reading an article before the movie came out, before May 18th. But luckily I forgot everything from that article, so it was all good. But to add to that now, Deadpool had been trolling a lot of MCU characters. Now, Disney had threatened to sue the Deadpool creators because of the fact that they were using character names and trailers from the MCU. Now, if you're not familiar with this, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is owned by Disney. And so, 20th Century Fox, who owns X-Men and Deadpool, they don't want there to be a confusion between the two universes of film. So Disney was saying it would be best if Ryan Reynolds not mentioned, you know, Thanos, among other things. But throughout the film, you still saw Ryan Reynolds doing this, playing Deadpool, trolling the MCU hard, just pretty funny. And he didn't care. It was so savage what was going on with the trolling, but nonetheless, it happened. So these were the few characters that were being trolled throughout, the, you know, the whole Deadpool 2 movie of the MCU. He had trolled... Thanos, Black Panther, Black Widow, and Hawkeye. So that was pretty good. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, please share, comment, and subscribe. Okay? And once again, if you're new to the channel, this is your boy, The Shows, and this is Shows World TV. I make new videos for every Thursday, so don't forget to hit the bell notification to be notified every time I make a new video. Okay? But this video will actually be uploaded for Monday, May 28th. Just to get it in early. There's going to be other reaction videos coming up soon, as well as other videos. But I wanted to make this review so that it gets to my channel early. Alright? So, if you watch this video, once again, knowing that it was a spoiler review, I'm sorry, that's on you. But yeah. I make new videos every Thursday, so this is your boy of shows, and I will see you guys next time on the upload. Peace.